I'm Dennis. Um, my name is John Shared a lot like professionally. I want to share much more like personal experiences here. Finding these internships, these are really hard. I want it to be more interactive, so I'll be asking you guys questions. So smile, you know, it's gonna be exciting. So we can start off with a little bit about intro of me. Um, I haven't really met any of you freshmen because I was abroad in the fall and y'all newbies just got here. So I figured it's a good way for y'all to meet me so I can meet more of you guys. So we have two truths and a lie. Um, one, I was a French collegiate athlete. Two, I was the last intern First Republic Bank ever had. Or three, I climbed the tallest mountain in California twice. Who, do you, who thinks the lie is the first one? Raise your hand. Okay, who thinks there's the second one? Okay, and the third one. Okay, it's actually the third one. So congratulations to those people. Um, regarding the first one, I was a French collegiate athlete. Abroad, I played volleyball collegiately for Sciences Po. Um, I played outside hitter. I played volleyball through high school. So yeah, I was a D1 athlete in France. I don't even speak French. So that was very exciting. <laughs> Two, I was the last intern First Republic Bank ever had. Brief, I'll talk more about this in a sec, but um, at First Republic, uh, most of the interns there were on the semester system. I was the only one that was actually on the quarter system. So I started two weeks later than all the other interns, finished two weeks later than all the other interns, and then that following spring is when shit hit the fan, um, Silicon Valley Bank collapsed, First Republic Bank collapsed, and then they were bought by JP Morgan, and their entire internship program got canceled forever. So I was the last intern they ever had, and the last summer internship program they ever had, making me the last intern First Republic Bank ever had. And the third one is, I've actually climbed the tallest volcano in California twice, Mount Shasta, actually the third tallest mountain in California. So you guys were close. All right, next. And these are pictures from it. My collegiate volleyball teammates, First Holy Bank, and this is the top of Mount Shasta. All right, next slide. Perfect. Briefly how, oh, there should be something here. That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. Well, yeah, wait, slide it one more time, let's see what happens. Oh. Oh. There it is, I did not even plan that. That was unexpected. <laughs> so briefly how this is gonna work, I'm gonna talk about my internships, then I'll talk more personal stuff give you guys some advice, and then questions at the end. So internships, kind of you can split them into two different ways. Startups, and then like during the school year, and then summer internships, that's when you get the really big resume boosters. So Kundu's was my first one that I did, fall quarter, um, no, no, winter and spring quarter of freshman year. Basically that was a startup, it was like an ed tech app, basically it was like Chegg, but different. Their whole value proposition was when you take a picture of a question, a real tutor answers it, um, but the problem with this was the tutors were often wrong. So it was really hard to actually pitch the staff that she knew would give wrong answers often. So I got really good at uh, pitching an app that I knew was bad. So that was interesting. I learned free food is the best way to get people to sign up for an app. And it was a very exciting stuff there. Hustle, I interviewed, I was kind of in a marketing role my sophomore, um, sophomore fall. And then Como, actually I worked with Tiffany um, last spring. Um, this was a startup that is basically like an Airbnb competitor. Probably not gonna be successful, if we're gonna be completely honest. Um, but still a really good thing for the rest of us. So for Kundus and Hustle, it was more in a marketing role. Coma for me was a product management type of role. Um, and then Summers, my first summer internet for Public Bank, as I mentioned, within lending services. Basically, I was working on the mortgage team, which sounds boring, but I actually learned so much, and I know everything there is to know about mortgages, and people were really smart on that team. So the top left picture is me with all my team um, at First Public Bank. Um, this past summer, I interned at Kraft Heinz, um, like the food company. Um, the third largest food company in the entire world. Um, they make things like uh, like Kraft Mac and Cheese, Jell-O, Lunchables, Capri Sun, like ketchup. Heinz Ketchup. Um, they're the number one purchaser of tomatoes in the entire world. They buy 200 billion tomatoes a year, you know? And they have a person whose full-time job is like a tomato scientist who engineers new tomatoes. You'd be surprised how complicated and difficult food production is. Um, I worked on the supply chain there. Um, I had never taken a supply chain class before. Um, I was put there, it was more of like a digital supply chain team. Basically, we were only making products internally, um, basically to more efficiently allocate and store inventory. Um, the smartest people I've ever met in my entire life work for Kraft Heinz Supply Chain. Like, the amount of engineering, the amount of brains that goes behind making, manufacturing, like the production lines of all this food, distributing the food, like the truck networks, is insane. And it was very digitized and very remarkable how smart these people were. And then this summer, I'll be going to BCG in Seattle. Um, I'm very excited for that. A um, huge thank you to Mike in particular because I was casing with him all last summer. So when he was getting ready for Allman, I was getting ready for BCG. Um, and I randomly got an email in October to interview for them. And I was still in Paris. And I texted Mike, I was like, hey, I have an interview for BCG in like two weeks. And then he was, I was literally casing with him the next day. Um, the thing with Kraft Heinz, they did not actually give any free food in the office, which was a little unfortunate, um, especially considering they make food. 
I was like, I'm sure we can get a good deal on Lunchables because we make them, but that was not the case there. Two other things I want to mention briefly, Bridge to Consulting and IBM Accelerate, most of these big companies have these programs specifically for freshmen and sophomore applicants that are like, put your foot in the door type of vibe. Um, Kelsey, are you here? No, no Kelsey is currently doing like an interview for Deloitte type of thing, um, where it's like a Deloitte freshman consulting role. Um, you are there for five weeks, you learn more consulting, and then you prioritize for a full internship next year. So for uh, Bridge to Consulting, that was actually through BCG. Um, it's for minorities in consulting, so white men in consulting, there's not enough of them. Bad joke. <laughs> I got it as a first gen. No, terrible I joke. I think they removed first wow, gen. Wow, that was coming year, by the way. that landed really painful. Like, we all just like, an awkward laugh. So don't. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, so bridge consulting, really good program. If you're first gen, they which means your it. parent, you got rid of it. It's, it's not first gen anymore. Never mind. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what the criteria are anymore. Yes, it's minorities. But it's just minorities. Okay. I'm in just Google. IBM Accelerate also is this really good program. Basically, there they have like six different tracks. They have um, software engineering, car engineering, product management, client sales, so it's like the salespeople that sell IBM products, and then marketing. And then you would meet with a group every week for like six weeks straight, and then you prioritize um, for a full internships the next year. Um, I didn't find it too interesting, but the point to take away from this is there's lots of opportunities to get your foot in the door with these big companies even now. Um, yeah, these other pictures at the Chicago Pride Parade. I caught a goose with my dad in Chicago, and then at the bottom left there, that's me and my manager, Jerome, getting tacos on my last day of work. So very exciting stuff there. And then a random side quest, I tutored English to a little six-year-old girl, Eliana, in France, and she was really good at uh, Uno, and she would shit talk me in French and always win. So interesting fun back there. All right, next slide. This one's more personal stuff. Uh, we can slide it to the next one. So professional and fun. Obviously, you say it's like a social experience. It's exciting, right? Um, but professionally, like TBG is very, very important. Uh, you guys are one of us now, right? So you might think like, wow, people at TBG are weird. Why are they like that? No, why are we like that? You, know, you are one of us now. You're a full member and really embrace that. Um, the way I like to think about it is the best part about TBG is you're put like in the middle of a wheel and then there's spokes going everywhere. And these spokes are all the different people in the club. Like we all do very different things outside of TBG. We're all very interesting people. And being in that club, we're, very, we're always happy to help. Like every single time I've asked an older member for help for me, for my resume, interview prep, casework, anything, they've always said yes. And any time a younger member has said yes to ask me, I've always said yes too. I mean, much more likely to get help from someone within the club, because we know you. Like we're in TBG together. We're here for each other. Um, if you randomly reach out to a person on LinkedIn that goes to UCLA, you're much likely to hear back from them. Literally, TBG is here for you, and we're all here for each other. Um, this particularly is good for interview prep. Um, like Mike and I probably, I think I literally did at least 10 cases with Mike over the summer, uh, where I cased him, he cased me. Um, and your casing buddies will be found in this club. Um, I think everyone that is doing consulting internships here now has cased in some form with several people in this club. I mean, I also cased with Audrey, and then I was casing a lot with Tatiana, my friend, in another club that I met um, from a coffee chat for another consulting company in the fall. Product Space was another club that I was a part of last year in particular. That's more of a product management type of role, um, though I didn't really want to do PM stuff after that club, but it was still like lots of really smart, really chill people. Um, and then fun stuff, backpacking club. Um, this is a picture from the trip I went on two weekends ago, and this girl is actually my girlfriend now. So that's really exciting stuff. So I have, yes, I'm cycling. I was on the cycling team my first two years, um, and it wasn't really kind of the team family I was looking for. Um, I would say it was more like a collection of people that just like biking that would go very rarely together. Now I'm on the triathlon team, and there's much more of a family there, and we train and ride together. However, when I was on the cycling team, I did win a race. So that was very exciting. Um, this picture is from Product Space, Sakva. Sakva is honestly, I think, the coolest person I've ever met in my entire life um, in terms of how smart he is and how chill he is and how accomplished he is as well. Um, what he is, I mean, I could talk about Sakva all day. Something really funny that he did, though, is he and his friend, they just went to like Bel Air Mansion open houses and pretended to be tech bros that just sold their startup in the Bay Area and got like full private tours of these mansions. So go and do that if you have the time. It's very exciting. It's on my budget list, too. I'm in the Russian speaking club. I mean, speaking another language, there's probably a club for it. And at least for me, like growing up, Russian was my primary language. I only spoke Russian at home. It's my first language. I pulled up to kindergarten knowing no English. Like, I don't know how that worked, but it did. So if you speak another language and you want to find more people, there definitely are the people here to do that. Next slide. Okay, TVG stuff. Um, okay, that is actually after TVG social. So um, I don't remember putting that picture there, so I don't know who put that there. Uh, thanks to whoever did that. Um, the people, very exciting. Um, everyone is very interesting. 
everyone is very cool and everyone's very willing to help. Um, I've already got like dinners or lunches with video game newbies. Reach out and try to meet as many people as you can. Like your network is here for you and we're gonna do great. Um, resources for recruiting in PD, the Google Drive we have is cracked. I mean, we have so many resources in there, like case books, interview workshop questions, any single biz econ textbook that you would need to buy is in the drive. If you're a biz econ or econ and you need a textbook, like for management one A and B, calculus, never buy, I have never paid anything for any textbook, any inclusive access, I've never paid money for any educational materials here, most of it is in the TVD drive. So, are they pirated? Probably. Do we care? No. <laughs> Get the textbooks and save yourself some money. And Rage Cage. My first time playing Rage Cage was a TVG, and I love it every single time. Uh, Gavin and I play it every single time there's a TVG social. All right, next slide. I'll leave you guys with some three pieces of advice. Um, okay, I think you need to sign one more. Yes. Professional, personal, and social. Professionally, you have to apply. Um, John and Mike, we probably, collectively, us three, over our time, I usually have applied to at least 500 internships, I think. Um, the thing is, you just have to apply. Like literally, it's re really a numbers game at the first uh, two years. Um, for me, my first year at First Plug Bank, um, I went to a, uh, like a virtual office hour they had on Handshake, and I applied to all 50 internships they had in the <laughs> San Francisco office. All 50 internships they had in the San Francisco office. I got one interview in the lending department. I was in Belarus when that was happening, at my grandma's apartment. My dad had to buy me a Wi-Fi chip so I can take the Zoom interview and I couldn't have any camera because my it was just that bad. Um, and I got it, I didn't know anything about lending, I just was like very charismatic I think, and like really interested and eager to learn, and they got me in there and I learned so much. Um, and then after that, I put my good resume booster so I can get a good internship next year. Um, Craft Times, I probably applied to another 100 internships my sophomore year, Craft Times was the one that landed. Um, it was actually cool because they flew us out to Chicago for the final round interview um, and posted up in a really nice hotel and whatnot. So that was really exciting. But the point is you have to apply to a bunch of internships. You will get rejected for most of these internships or ghosted for most of them. And it will be very heartbreaking. It will be very like morally draining, but you just have to keep going. Um, Handshake is completely underrated. I've never applied for anything on LinkedIn. Handshake is really, really good. Usually pays for it. It's free for all of us. Basically, I have it way more details there than on my LinkedIn and then you can apply for jobs that are sent directly to the companies. So the way it works is Handshake is like a third party. Um, UCLA pays for Handshake. The companies pay to put their jobs on Handshake, and then for us students, it's free. And so you can apply to all these jobs, all these top companies, recruit on Handshake directly. A few of these super, super big ones, like these top consulting companies, or like top fan companies like Google, for example, have their own application portfolios, like their own application portals, but most of them you can apply on Handshake, and it's super easy to do that. I got both First Republic and Kraft Heinz through Handshake. Um, startups, also really, really important. Um, I interviewed at three startups. I mean, I mean interned at three startups, probably usually might be even know what, two, three, three, zero. zero. <laughs> so collectively, two Six. per, on average. Yeah. Um, they're really good ways because like, you don't need any experience to be in a startup. Like they just hire whatever, they're like, oh, it's a UCA student, they're smart because they got in, we want them. You typically won't be paid, you're paying an experience, um, and that's really good for the resume. Like I still, from all three of those internships, have really good experiences, and I'm able to talk about them in interviews, regardless of how, um, what kind of role it is. I can always kind of translate those experiences I had to whatever job I'm applying for. The last thing I'll say professionally is your first two summers, it doesn't really matter what kind of interview you get, it just matters that you can sell it and convey those skills you learn to whatever job you're finding. Like for example, if you're interested in consulting, or banking, or tech, that summer after your junior year is the big summer for you. Um, right now, for example, us three, we have our big summer internships coming up. Because the way that internships work are, typically, if you're a summer intern and you have another year to graduate, they'll give you a full-time offer if you're a good intern there. So this is a really good way to have a job after you graduate lined up. Um, for example, Fion, um, who was a previous president of the club, intern at BCG, after her junior year, got offered a full-time job, and then didn't have to worry about work all of senior year because she had a job lined up, graduated, had like a two-month break, and then went to work full-time at BCG. Not having to interview anymore, and so she's just had a very chill year. An eight-month break. An eight-month break, never mind, um, even better. Um, so the, the point is here, that third junior summer is crucial. That's when you want to have that like top internship. That's what you want to work towards. So those first two summers, it's less important what the prestige name is, like Kraft Heinz, First Republic Bank, these aren't big names, you know? But but like not like they're not your traditional like they're like respectable, like top in like everyone wants to intern there, right? Um, First Republic Bank was in the news um, for not very good reasons. But now everyone knows it, you know, and you met the last intern they ever had. 
Um, it's very important to chase experiences that you'll learn from. At Craft Times, I learned so much about supply chain. At First Public, I learned so much about everything related to mortgages and lending. You want to figure out how to learn well. Um, even at UCLA, this translates to, um, to being a student here. I mean, honestly, like, econ class is very theoretical. You're never gonna use anything what you learn in your classes, typically in your job. What you learn as a UCLA student is how to learn. How to learn efficiently, how to learn well, how to figure out what you need to learn and what to actually study, and then figure out how to apply that well to new problems. Right? You're not working on like memorizing these models or things. You're learning how to train your brain to be a muscle that can solve these really complicated problems. That's why they take us to be, that's why they hire so well from UCLA. Because like to get in, you have to be such a smart student and you have to be able to solve these really complicated problems. And so these companies are looking for really smart problem solvers, and that's what you need to learn at these internships. How to learn quickly and how to solve whatever comes your way. Personally, don't be a bot. I know this is kind of funny, and I, but I also know, like y'all have been around here for enough time to know that UCLA is kind of full of NPCs. Like you meet people and you're like, I don't know how this person is like, a, like they have no personality, I can't talk to them. Don't be that person, right? We're all really weird, we're all very like special, sure. We all have something that makes us very unique. That's the thing, everyone is very unique. And I remember for me, like, it took me a while to acknowledge like I have a very strange personality. Like, I'm, my jokes, no one finds them funny. Um, I like have very weird hobbies and passions. Um, and my idea of what to do with a free time is probably unlike anything other people would have. And so for a while, I found that very difficult because I wanted to fit into like the UCLA norm, right? Humans are social creatures. You want to fit in and be part of that group, but you're never going to be like, because UCLA is full of bots and you don't want to be a bot. I think the sooner that you accept who you are and really just try to put that person out there, the sooner you'll find friends and partners even that really appreciate that side of you. No, I'm serious. Like, when you go in guns blazing being 100% yourself, you don't have to worry about like, oh, will they actually like me me? Because they're meaning you, you right now. And if they don't like it, move on. There's literally 45,000 students at UCLA. You'll meet your friends and the people that you need to be with. Um, for me, it took two, two and a half years to find them, but I feel very happy because I have very rewarding friendships. I mean, sure, it's the honeymoon phrase right now. We can be realistic, but like, <laughs> no, but honestly, oh being yourself is very important because you have to, like you won't be able to have like a, good, content time without truly being who you are. So we're all weird, embrace it. Socially, this is something I especially learned while being abroad. Um, abroad, I had literally like three or four friends that I spent literally all my like waking hours with. It was Joe and Emma in particular. Um, one, Joe was British, Emma's Dutch. We were literally, us three spent all of our time together, like every waking hour, like we were always studying together, we cooked dinners together, we went out and got pints together, we like traveled all over Europe together. And I built such a sense of camaraderie and companionship with them. This is something we all know fundamentally, that having a few close friends is much more conducive to long-term happiness than having a lot of shallow connections, right? The thing to acknowledge is like, at UCLA, you're, as freshmen, you're gonna be meeting a lot of people, right? You're meeting dozens, hundreds, thousands of people. Your name remembering circuits get fried. You don't remember what anyone's name is. You're meeting all these people. That's the mentality you should be having as a freshman and sophomore, but then I would recommend really trying to find who your people are and focus honestly on not having more than like 10 friends. Because then you'll find like, find those t at least maximum of 10 people you really vibe with and spend all your time with them making really deep connections and you'll just have a much better time, right? Like I can count on like two hands, the number of close connections I can have and like who I can talk about anything at any time with, right? Um, and those are really important to have, especially when you're having a bad day and you know you need to talk to someone. Next, I'll leave with one last piece of advice. Um, I know my mom is probably watching this video but her favorite quote of all time is, if it matters to you, you find time. If not, you find an excuse. This applies to everything. Everything in your entire life. Laundry, homework, but also more practical things like your health, right? Relationships with families, friends, even loved ones, right? For example, your, our bodies are a perfect example of this. If you don't be proactive about eating well, you know, exercising, sleep, right? We need sleep as college students, especially when we're studying so hard. You're gonna find that your body degrades really badly. The thing is, you have to find time for it and you have to make sure that it matters to you, right? I know a lot of people that, if you find yourself dreading, like, I don't wanna call this person, you know, like, whatever it may be, like, if you find yourself always avoiding something, that should be a switch in your head that it doesn't matter to you and you should figure out, why does it not matter to me? Should it matter to me? If so, how can I make that um, priority for me? And if not, how can I cut that out of my life? Um, I have a friend of my mom being in this and this is a picture of me and her in Moscow. I call my mom every single day, right? It literally doesn't even matter. Like, I literally might talk to her for five minutes if I just want to say hi. Like, nothing could have happened. I just want to say hi to my mom, right? She's up in the Bay Area. I miss her so much.
But the thing is, like, it's very important for me to have close connections with my family, right? And the thing is, a lot of people don't, and that's really sad to me. Because for me, like, family is everything, right? My parents pulled up in America, they didn't know a word of English, they didn't have any jobs, and they just were, like, trying to make a life here, you know? And, like, so much opportunity has been given for me for them, like, how could I possibly not just call them, right? I do want to say, like, in the topic of family and friends, right? People, like, are busy. I get it. We're all busy. We're college students. UCLA, like, prioritizes, like, having a full calendar of always having dinners with people and lunches and classes and studying and clubs. I know it gets overwhelming, but you need to find time to make, um, make time for those special people in your life. Um, for, like, my mom, literally on the walk here, I was calling her. Nothing much really happened today, but we still just talked. Um, the way I like to think of it is, imagine, okay, this is going to get kind of dark for a second, but imagine, like, you have passed away and you're looking at your funeral, right? Who are the people in, your, in the front row of your funeral crying? Those are the people you want to value and cherish, right? That can be your family, those can be your friends, those can be loved ones. Even sometimes it can be like mentors, professors, even other students in your classes, right? Find those people that really matter to you and really make an effort to make good connections with them and really try to maintain those even as um, the time goes on. So, I believe, yeah, I believe that's it for me. Um, <laughs> John Mike or not? Before the questions. Actually, wait, I think there is one more slide at the end. I swear. Before we, for questions, I just want to circle back to the point where, like, he showed us his girlfriend, but then said he could talk about a guy for days. <laughs> That's That's I, I can talk about anyone in this picture for days. I got to meet all of them on the trip, and it was really lovely. All right. I just want to see questions. Questions. Wow. Thank you for putting your phones away and paying attention. I really appreciate it. All that is. Yeah. And it can be about like any of like our specific internship experiences.